All right, I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do some more comparisons between the Guider and the uh, Dreamer. Uh, so I mentioned before that this is the same print head, the MX-10, MK-10, I think it is, print head, that's in the Dreamer. It's just that it's enclosed better, it has better connections for the heating core, it's got higher quality all around, so. So we're gonna be taking this off, and I just wanted to point out that, that the thing that's exposed is this little button here. So this is how you load the filament. You push this button down, that disengages the uh, gears that uh, do the direct drive of filament. Over here, it's all exposed. Here's the button right here on this, the Dreamer NX. So this is all enclosed in this big uh, uh, enclosure here, I guess, to protect it. I'm not sure what purpose that's actually serving, but uh, we're going to take this off and uh, see what's inside. Okay, so the tools you get with the uh, printer are the same as with the Dreamer. So you've got this, I think it's a three millimeter, it could be two and a half, I forget. And then the smaller one, which is used for the print head itself. There's a few, there's one thumb screw I think that holds the uh, heater core in that takes a smaller Allen wrench. So we're gonna use this, this um, either two and a half or three millimeter uh, Allen wrench to get this cover off. In the background, you can hear my other printer going, so I'm still making stuff. So while I'm getting this one ready to go, I'm not stopping making things. So it's so good to keep these screws safe. Put them in a little tray. The thing is, you know, when I'm done printing or even when I change filaments, I like to clean out the printhead. I, I, they just tell you to, uh, you know, um, <coughs> press, uh, use the front panel to, uh, uh, say, unload filament. Just pull the filament out. That, that leaves a bunch of filament inside the print head that's getting cold and solidifying, which I don't think that's a great idea. Um, I, my standard procedure is to uh, clean out the print head at the end of each day and not leave any filament in there, including using a needle, so, as you've seen on some of my other videos. So this doesn't come off yet. It looks like we have to take this one off too. It's kind of embedded. It's recessed, let's say, down in this little slot here. So we'll unscrew this one until it pops a little bit. Maybe this whole thing will lift off now, okay. All right, so I guess there's a lot of, there's an exposed board here, which is uh, important. So uh, let's slide over a little bit. So you can see there's an exposed uh, printed circuit board. And um, there's some plugs. Oh, you know, okay, so, so here's the heater core wire. So the heater core wire goes into a, uh, a connector, I mean a uh, terminal, terminal strip, I think that's the right name for it, that you can screw in separately. So replacing the heater core uh, doesn't require a plug, which is what these other things are, and what is on the NX is a plug. This is the version you can buy from Flashforge as a replacement part. And there's just two screws right here in the green. See this little green screws? So you can use a screwdriver that comes with it to unscrew that. So uh, this, I was gonna say, this is the sensor that flips down to level the bed. So that's new for this versus the, uh, <coughs> versus the NX. And then this is the control cable. So that's got a nice connector there, a wide angle connector. Here's the motor, and then um, if we want to clean this out, we've got to detach the motor from this front thing. And I think there's some screws in the front here that do that. All right, well, it's basically impossible to see, but embedded back in here alongside the, uh, underneath the um, printed circuit board and recessed in there is the Allen's wrench for the uh, the Allen screw for the print for the print head, so we can put our tool in there and unscrew it. And then there's one on the other side. I'm pretty sure there's a video that shows how to do this from Flash Forge. I, I did. I think I watched it. But as I know how the other one works, it has to be this. Those screws have to be in that location. On the other side over here, there's another one. It's again. It's recessed. Recess back in this little slot. So let me get the other one out. It's really hard for you to see what I'm doing. So get the other one out and then it'll show how the printhead comes off.
we can slide this motor back and there's the uh, feed right there it's actually got a nice little uh, um, cone to feed the filament down into this hole so now when it's time to clean the print head we can use our pusher push it down this hole and it should push out the filament out the nozzle we can also get our needle in here we could theoretically i think i was on another video where you could you can push down this button and then you can push this through problem with that is i i, I don't really recommend this anymore i, I kind of put it as kind of a quick and dirty way to clean it out but i realized that when you pull this back out it's, this has some filament on it because the filament sticks to this rod so you're pulling it up through the gears which is going to muck those up because you really want that so so anyway at the end of the day and when we change filaments, we're going to be taking this motor off and the screws that are inset in there, we're not going to go anywhere. So we should be able to push this motor back into its position and then uh, screw those screws back in with our Allen wrench and uh, have everything nice and tight. Now, by messing with this part, we're not really changing anything about the printing because the print head is separate from this. This is just about the feed mechanism. So taking this off and putting it back on isn't going to affect the accuracy of uh, the print head and um, where it is in relationship to the, uh, the the print bed, you know, which affects how your prints work out. So th this kind of stuff is fine. It doesn't really affect um, how the printer works. It just affects the feed mechanism and allows you access to clean it out. So again, I, I, I've, since I print 10, 15 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long, except when I'm on vacation, I think it's super important to keep your print head clean and don't leave filament in it. So that's just, that's just what worked for me and I, I recommend that. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this back together and then we can start doing our print. I just want to do one more thing about comparing the print head. So you can see here all these wires, including the heater core wire, which is this one, uh, these motor, these uh, fan wires and so forth are right next to this, this uh, motor. And the motor is, you know, right up against the, uh, the heater block down here. It's actually, this is the heat break, but this motor gets hot. It gets over our, easy over our, maybe 80, 90 degrees C. So um, all these wires right next to it cause problems because they're, they're, they're basically melting, at least te temporarily. This, this had a little short in it, so I had to put this uh, um, electrical tape on it. So this is not a great design. They could clean this up a lot. Uh, and if you look at this one, they have actually cleaned it up. So now all the connections on the other side of the circuit board and there's a uh, heat there's a heat heat sink or like a kind of a heat shield this aluminum heat shield right here between the hot stuff which is over here printed circuit board and all these connectors and everything's nicely laid out so this is really a massively superior uh printer which would you expect because this printer costs twice as much uh in fact the list price it costs about two and a half times as much so uh, you know th so th this should be a lot more reliable and I have the same kind of problems with too much heat on delicate parts that you have with this one. So I'm really happy. I mean, I did look at I did look at videos that showed the print head with the cover off, so I knew that this was better. But I can see now I, they didn't. No one pointed out this uh, heat shield. So this is really a much superior design. It should be much more robust, and so I'm super stoked about that. Okay, let's go over the quick start guide. So as I figured out for myself. Uh, to get the last of the uh, packaging material out from underneath the print bed, you have to uh, plug it in and then uh, move up the print bed manually. Then you can pull out the rest of that stuff. So that was easy enough to figure out. I think I saw that on a video, actually. Now it talks about the um, spool holder. And again, this is the spool holder that comes with it. And... Uh, it only works with the spools that uh, FlashForge puts out. At least that's that's one of the ones that works. It doesn't, doesn't work for like, this is a Prusa filament. This hole in the Prusa filament uh, reel is too small for this. So after you do a test, but the first thing we're gonna do is make a new spool holder. I think other people have had to do that too. So we're gonna wanna recreate this bracket and I'll show you how to do that uh, in an easy way on the computer. So, so we'll do that in a minute. I'll show you how we're going to, we need to boot, bootstrap a new spool holder because we can't, we can't use this to, right, so to get out, but I 
thought we can't use this to uh, send this film in. So how are we going to get started? Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so we'll just leave that over there for now. It doesn't really matter. So it tells you how to load the filament, and then it tells you to secure the filament tube guy in the R-shaped buckles and thread the filament to the two. So there's a bracket on the back. I'm going to show you that now. And then we'll put this uh, black feed tube that came with it, and we'll then we, can, then we can actually print something. Oh, I mentioned yesterday that I was surprised how big this was. I actually wasn't surprised. <laughs> this was the size I knew it was before I bought it, because I know this is about 70,000 square millimeters, and the uh, Dreamer NX is about uh, 34,000 something. So I already knew this was twice as big. I'm not sure where I got the 195 parameter and that it was a square, so just ignore that from yesterday's, or from uh, the previous video I was talking about this print bed I'm being surprised how big it was this is what this is what I, I wanted this is what I paid for all right it was kind of dark in here and uh, this is all black so I put a spotlight on it so we're gonna use our same uh, three millimeter allen wrench oh here it is so we, we absolutely we need to loosen these little uh oh, it's only one on one side okay so there's, there's a screw on the left side which I guess compresses this uh holder so we'll just loosen that a little bit, I guess. It, it's not clear. So it's something about an R-shaped buckle, which I don't really see anything that looks like an R, but... Now we'll try to feed this through. This this side is flared out, so that one may not go in there. We'll try the other side. Hmm, it doesn't really want to go in there. Well, I'm going to try to take this bracket all the way out and see if we can see how it's supposed to go in there. So unscrew this all the way, and presumably we can pull this out. Okay, so that came out. Oh, this doesn't want to come out. Hmm. Maybe it's only supposed to go in part way. I don't know, this, it seems like it should go. You want something. This has to be secured in here. So this has to be able to insert, insert into the top of this thing. And now it's going in. Okay. All right. And this, I think there's some kind of a, yeah, there's some kind of a feed cone here on the bottom. Uh, it's going to be too hard to probably see that, but a little feed cone on the bottom. So it feeds the filament in through. And this is all the way seated into this bracket. And then we'll put the screw back in, and that should. I should secure it, presumably. Well, this is solid now, it won't come out. Okay, I'll turn the spotlight off. Now on top here, this is supposed to go down in here. And it just fits here. There's a recess here and it just fits into it. It's not secured in any way, but this shouldn't come out because uh, all the force is going to be down this way and it'll just kind of any friction will push it back down so this can move around freely and uh, keep our filament feeding smoothly into the machine all right so now how are we going to bootstrap this uh, spool holder well we're going to base our spool holder on a very successful side loader which is based on the filler project we have on our operating nx so this has a bracket and then this um, uh, horizontal thing with a with a roller on it. it this just slips into this bracket. So this is a this is a universal roller, and we just need to re recreate this bracket that attaches to the side of the NX. So this is super nice. It's got uh, uh, skateboard bearings. I have some extras of those. So so you know I, I could just make the bracket and then use this one, but because we're going to keep printing with this until we get this one operating, and this is also our backup printer. And at some point, we may need to print two things at the same time and use this printer, you know, because you get some kind of special order. So we're going to keep this printer available to run simultaneously with this one, although most of the time, this will be stored away in a box just as a backup. All right, so we need to recreate this roller. We need to print that out. But first, first we're going to do a test print. Then we're going to print this bracket that I engineered. Uh, so th this is one that's on Thingiverse that I created to fit the NX. And we're going to make a new one which is designed to go in this this uh, little slot here. So. so we can't use this, so what are we going to do? Well, we're just going to lay the 
filament reel on the on the table here and feed the filament up in kind of a spiral up into here so this reel is pretty full so there shouldn't be a lot of friction coming around the outside of this i think it'll feed fine uh up into this area here so we'll try it if it doesn't work we'll do something else if you like this video please give it a thumbs up post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and i'll try to respond that's all for now but more videos are coming and if you want to see them please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one this is beta signy signing out and keep looking up